Hi, I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja, and today I am super excited because I've reached 5,000 YouTube subscribers. I had a little happy dance for myself and everything. So if you're not one of them, you know what to do. But if you are, thank you so, so much. It means, it just means so much to me. As a thank you, I'm posting today an encore presentation of a video I did for the Rebecca Page Sewing Summit back earlier this year. So I hope you enjoy Kids Can Sew, making a toy blanket with my six-year-old son. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja. Welcome to my class, Kids Can Sew, making a toy blanket. Today, I'm helping my six-year-old make a toy blanket for his stuffed dog. Yeah, he's only six, but he can learn to sew. He's not ready to be in charge of the foot pedal, but he will learn the basics of sewing and guide the fabric into the sewing machine. Let's get right down to honesty. Working on a sewing project or any project can be a test of patience. I'm not talking about adults here. I'm talking about the kids too. So be patient with each other. Good communication is key. If things get stressful, just take a break, mark on the instructions where you are, and come back to it later when you're ready. Saying all that might have gotten you a bit worried. How hard is this blanket going to be? Well, actually it's a really simple project, but I have to admit that calmly watching my six-year-old spend 10 minutes cutting out a paper square can tax anyone's patience. So before we get into the tutorial, I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about the step-by-step -step printable project instructions for the toy blanket, which also includes instructions for a pillow. These are great for kid readers who want to do the project on their own, or for anyone who just likes to mark the steps when they're finished. You can also download my needle change and cleaning chart. This will help you pick the size and kind of needle to use for any project. Track when you last changed your needle and when you last cleaned your sewing machine. Hmm, now when was that? So let's get started with our project. You just need the basic sewing supplies. I used a quarter yard of fabric, but you could use as much fabric as you need for as big as your blanket is. And you could add some batting to it if you wanted. So let's get sewing. Do you want me to do an introduction? No. <laughs> okay. Introduction. Okay. Hi, I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja, and this is my son. Meow. Well, his name's Jasper, but he likes to be called Meow sometimes. Meow. Meow, meow? Yeah, meow. Do you want to introduce yourself? Meow. Okay. <laughs> well, Jasper has decided that he wants to make a small blanket for his little puppy dog. His puppy dog's about this tall and is named... Stuffed animal. Stuffed animal. Puppy dog is this tall and is named French Fry. <laughs> and so French Fry needs a little blanket. And so we are going to make french fry a blanket today. Now Jasper has only done a little bit of sewing with me in the past, very, very little. But he's very interested in how things work. And um, I took all of the fuzz out of my serger the other day and he was absolutely enthralled about how a serger works. So he loves knowing how things work. He has picked out two fabrics here. We have this blue, and we have crabs. Crabs. Actually, lobsters. Too. Lobsters. I forgot to turn on our top camera. Ooh. Right. Ooh. Mom, I got free. Yes. Okay, let's focus on our project. Okay. This blanket is going to be a square. So first, we need to make our pattern. Now. And we are limited in size to our square because this is as wide as this fabric is. So we have our blue chevron and we have our lobsters. <laughs> so I have a piece of, fab of paper here and we've already drawn on it. So we're reusing some paper and we're going to do a quick measurement of this fabric. So we know how big our, okay. our, big our square can be. So look right here. I have this ruler. Can you count for me how big this is? Okay, so it's nine at least. It is nine. Nine, so, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Three. So our square can't be bigger than nine and probably not bigger than eight and a half just because it's barely on here. So we're gonna make a 
nine inch square. Now you don't have to make this paper pattern, you can just mark it on here, but I find that kids understand it better when you make them a pattern so that you can see the size of it. So Jasper, can you help me here? Yes. Can you draw a line along this side and that side? And by the way, Mom, this looks like a tractor with us. It does look like a tractor. I'm just saying. I'm going to trade you up for this marker. This, this is a fabric marker, and this is a paper marker. Okay. So can you take the lid off, or do you need some help? <laughs> okay, draw along these two edges for me. Uh, the what edges? The top and the side. Just big, long lines. You don't need on the outside of the ruler, okay. along here, just big long lines. You don't have to stop at any particular time. Excellent. Oh no. No, no, it's a fine. Hey, it's okay. fine. Go on the other corner. Make sure you get the corner and go on the other side too. So get up to the corner and go along the other side. Excellent. Okay. So now we're gonna make a eight and a half inch square. So we're gonna line up the eight and a half line with the lines we already put on there. Do you see that? So this is eight, nine and eight, so eight and a half. Right here. Yep, so can you trace around on the other side now? Right here? Right, oh yeah. Right along the edge, yep. So to six. Oh, uh, okay, that's okay. Oh! I don't mind. I got <laughs> Is it crazy how I just keep doing Whoa, that's good. Cool. Okay, so now we have our square, and Jasper's going to cut out our square. Yay! I have a pair of scissors here. Mini, mini scissors. Mini scissors, yes. These are Ikea scissors, and they're the right size for kids' hands, and they are really sharp, and they're left-handed and right-handed, because one of my kids is a lefty and one is a righty, so I like having these Ikea scissors around. Can you cut out the square for me? Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Take your time. I just want to get it. Do your right. best job of staying on the line. <laughs> Yay! Last piece. Okay. So this is going to be our pattern. Please stop trying to cut that off. It's just okay. too creepy. I will. I will right along the edge there. Okay. I'll fix that little spot. Okay. okay. Now that we have our pattern, so this is as big as our blanket is going to be. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to use two pieces of fabric. I could imagine it could be a little bigger. Maybe. Okay, so we have this and this, and we need to put them pretty sides together. What? What the pretty? Yeah, put the pretty sides together. Why? Because we're going to sew around them and then flip it right side out so the pretty sides will be on the outside. So which side of this is the pretty side? That one? Pretty. Okay, which side of this is the pretty side? Uh, both of them. Yeah, they are both pretty. Maybe it's, which one is brighter? Uh, I think I'm gonna, that one's lighter, so that would be, it would be this one. Okay, so this is the pretty side? Yeah, because it's a little darker. So put the pretty side touching the pretty side. Uh, pretty side? Touching is, the pretty side. And it would be that way. Okay. I'm going to line up the edges. And then can you trace around this? To help you trace around it, okay. I'm going to put some pins in. Ooh, pins in? I do not like pins. Mr. Pin stabbed me once. Mr. Uh, pin. Mr. Pin stabbed you once? Yes. Oh. The one, the bobby pin one. Mm. It stabbed me on the foot. Don't you remember that? So, if your kid is a little bit fearful of pins, especially when you're tracing, I have another tool that I like to use, which is temporary spray adhesive. Mm. Um, this one might be empty, so I'll have to check. Oh, nope. Still can I try more. some? Yeah, pop of the sedge. Can you spray? Yes. Okay, spray in your fabric. Uh. There you go. Whoa! Oh. Not all in one spot. Oh, that's going to be very sticky. Here, I'll see if I can. Oh, that is gross. My finger is going to be Mom, very sticky. Mom, you are like a Frankenstein's finger. Well, 
Generally, it comes out a little bit better. You can see this one's gotten a little tall. Let's see if this one's better. I have like a million bottles of this liner. No, this one is. Better. You can tell I like this stuff. I just keep buying more, right? Oh, that's how it's supposed to come out. A really fine mist. And it just turns your pattern piece into a post-it note. That's how it's supposed to work. So this is a good one. It smells like Sharpie, but I don't like the Sharpie Queen that you put on me for that. Mm -mm. Okay. You don't like the smell of that cream? Well, okay. Uh, so, yeah. let's focus up. Ready? You can cut around this as it is, or you can trace it and then cut it. Trace it? It's your call. It doesn't really matter. Is this it? Is this the one? That is the one to trace. Oh, because it's, uh, yeah. So there's two schools of thought here. If they trace it, it's a great way to just have them cut, actually sew on the line that you, they are tracing now. And that oh. means that they can make the needle hit that line the entire time. Is there a pin in there? No? Okay. Uh, okay. I was just doing if they choose to cut it out, then you should probably either draw the line that they're going to sew on, or you can have them follow it with the edge of their presser foot, which is, of course is you know the standard way to sew. Oh, that's funny. Ah! <laughs> Rolly chair. Let me kiss you. Jasper, please, let's focus up, please. Ugh. I know it's hard. Meow? Meow. Draw. Do you want me to make any of your lines straighter? Mm, no. Okay. So down here, he has marked really, really close to the edge, and that's not going to really work to sew on, otherwise we're going to have a hole. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have him cut this out now, and then we're going to sew farther in so that we don't have to worry about this. So I am going to peel my pattern off, which apparently has taken some of the crayon, too. That's exciting. That's funny. Hold on a second, Jasper. Actually, I'm going to stick these two layers of fabric together. If you're not using a basting spray, place a couple of pins in the center of the fabric to help keep everything together. So we're going to have you cut off the fabric now. It's going to be a little bit harder than paper because you're going through two layers here. There? Mm -hmm. Just cut right out on your line. Two layers? Two layers of the fabric because you're going through both of them at once. Okay. Uh, that seems a little weird, but okay. It's so they're the exact same size. Do you need me to scoot your chair a little different? Um, no, I want you to cut. You want me to cut? That's yeah, fine. it's too hard. But you got all the way through that. I'm really okay, impressed. Okay, I'll try more. Can I get my thumb out of the scissors first? Yes. Thanks. Your thumb is really Complimenting good. your child and pointing oh. out their hard work can really help them when they get to a part that oh, they my, find my difficult. Mom. Wow, you were doing so well. Oh. Yep, sometimes I do that. So if your scissors aren't quite sharp enough, Sometimes they won't really go through the fabric. Oh, no. You can help by holding the fabric taut next to it, but it does mean your child is cutting at your hand. Um, so um, that's a little risky right there. Or when they run into a spot where they're having trouble, you can just take it a little farther, turn it, and let them keep going. Whee! Little hands do get pretty tired quickly. Your scissors are the best. You can totally have this already cut out for kids. I like trying to include kids in every part of the process possible so that they can really feel ownership for what they're making. So Jasper, let me walk you through what What's happens. What's ownership? Ownership, it's yours. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start, we're gonna sew around this whole thing and we're going to leave a hole. Wait, so that's weird. What? You're sewing literally all the... Yeah, that's yeah, a little funny. We're going to sew. We're sewing on the lines? Um, well, we actually can't sew on the lines because they're too close to the edge. Okay. So I'm going to draw you a new set of lines to sew okay. on. Do you like that idea? Yeah. Is that cool? Yes. Okay, please stop playing with my drawers. 
Wow, we're gonna leave a spot open here and then we're gonna turn everything out of that hole and then we're gonna sew up the hole and then your blanket will be done. Yeah, but what are we gonna do about the dumb crayon? Well, the dumb crayon will come off when we wash it. <laughs> okay, then I get it. Okay, can I make you a set of lines to sew on? Yes. Okay. So I'm guessing because this is sticky and weird, if I try to put this down, it's gonna stick to the sewing machine. So I'm gonna leave it right side up and it shouldn't cause us too much trouble. Again, as I said, that stuff doesn't normally cause problems, but what's going on is that my nozzle was stuck. So you shouldn't have any problems. He's making lots of faces at his sister on the stairs right now, that's what's going on. She will be doing a video with me later. She's gonna make a pillow. Is this static, Mom? Hey, Mom, is this static? No, it's magnet. Okay. My scissors have been on the pin cushion so much that they have gotten a little bit magnetized. Okay, so I have blue lines here. I hope they're easy for you to see, but these are going to be the lines that Jasper's actually going to sew on. Well, what do you think? Which ones? The inside line. Shall I make it a different that color one? for you? The inside line here. Yeah. It needs to be a different color? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. If it's a different color, it will be easier for Jasper to see. Ooh. Let me. Mom. I'm going to make some. Love you, Mama. Love you, Violet. Okay, Violet. Goodbye. Have a nice puppy trip. Yeah, okay. I'll stop. Only if you give me a hundred times candy. Okay. Okay, is that easier to see? Yes, why are we making the dots? Because it's easier for me to draw it that way. You can understand that still though, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it? Yeah. I'll, we can I stuck the two layers together with temporary spray adhesive, but if you didn't use that, you'll need to pin the two layers together now. Yeah. So, we have a sewing machine here, but because of the way it is sewing with a really little kids, I'm gonna use a sewing machine where he can basically sit in my lap while we do it. Oh, yay. I'm going to be actually controlling the foot pedal and he is gonna be controlling where this goes. So give me a moment and we're gonna set up so you can see us do that. Meow. 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 Okay, Jasper and I are at the sewing machine now. This is my faf. Um, and it has some electric features, so I'm going to be having them use things like needle down button and tie off button. Tie off? Yeah, these are all buttons he's going to be pressing. If you don't have those, your child can easily just use your reverse button. Uh, I've already threaded the machine with yellow, and Jasper watched me do that. He picked out the yellow thread because his dog's name is French Fry, and French Fries are yellow. Um, so we do need to mark where we're going to beginning to begin and end so we don't forget. So Jasper, you want to go grab two pins mm -hmm. so that we don't forget? Two pins? Two pins. So we're going to start and stop along this edge. And we're going to need a two to three inch hole to be able to turn everything out. And believe it or not, little hands actually have a harder time doing this. So it's okay to make your hole a little bit big. So that's how we're going to mark it. If they're afraid of getting caught on these edges of the pins, what you can do is just stick them through a bunch more times so that they're really caught in there and poke the point of the needle down to the back side. So there's a much less chance that your child is gonna get stabbed. I think I would like that better. Uh, Jasper here and his sister Violet they love playing with pins. They stick them in my dress forms. So um, they, they're pretty good at not being stabbed already. Okay. Yeah, but I don't like to get stabbed if I accidentally do. Okay, so let's scooch up close to our machine. I mean, I'm not better than you at something. So we're going to take our threads and we're going to stick them through the center here, all the way to the back. We're going to slide this under the machine. Can you slide it under? 
Slide, 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 slide. Awesome. I want you to slide it so that this needle is somewhere near this line over here. Okay, now I'm gonna slide all the way up here because this is where we're starting. Okay, over here on the side, can you bend down and see that? That's my up and down presser foot. Can you push it down? Way! <laughs> now. Yeah. now I'm gonna have you do tie off. In my machine, this is the button that does tie off. You can just do some back stitches with your kid if you don't have a tie off button. So press my tie off button. Now I'm gonna do this. It's gonna go back and forth. And I got a question. Yeah. Can you use all of the notes at the same time? Uh, all the buttons are not really useful at the same time, most of the time. There are ways that you can use them all, but the ones that we use the most often are this and this. So I want you to press this button now. That's my needle down button. So next time I press my presser foot, which is my foot pedal, it's gonna go down and it's always gonna stop down. This is good because it means that children's fingers can't get the needle as we're moving by. So the next step is to teach your kid safety around the moving sewing machine. I already know all of that. You already know all that? Well, we're gonna still have to tell people. Okay. Do you do you want to review with me? Yes. Review. Okay. Now, now. Tell me, what is the safety? The safety is you must not put it like there or there or there while the sewing machine is running. Why is that? Because if if you if mom or it's someone else in your family member accidentally gets it on your hand, it might you might be bloody almost. Okay. So that's the part. So we, we keep our hands either flat or, this. or we hold on to the edges. Flat. So flat is good because I want to make a note that my hand, my foot is off of the foot pedal right now, so there's no way anything bad's going to happen. If his hands always stay flat and his hands get drawn in by the fabric, they will hit the presser foot and they can't keep going into the needle. So if your hands stay flat, you're always safe. There are some presser feet out there that are a little bit thicker that are supposed to make it safer for kids. I would just rather that they learn the process now of safety. So if their hands are flat, they're not gonna be able to get hurt. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Yes. Excellent. So Jasper's job is going to be driving and my job is speed control and starting and stopping. So I'm going to put my hand on the foot, the foot pedal, okay. my foot on the foot pedal, my okay. hand, my hands okay. are up here. Let me get down on the position. Okay. And you want to be able to see that orange line because that's what you're aiming for. Your needle is going on that orange line. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Tell me, go. Go. And you can use your hands sideways to help aim it. And I'm going really slow right now because we're just getting started. Now, I noticed something that you're doing, Jasper. You're pulling here. You need to make sure to not pull or push the fabric. Oh. Let the sewing machine take it at its own speed. Now, when we get to these points, they're a little bit hard because the kids run out of fabric to hold on and they start getting nervous. So what you can do is you put your hand back here, take this one away, and you can drive it just with the one hand. So because my needle's set to stop down, I can stop right on that corner, and Jasper's gonna help us pivot. Reach your hand to the back, lift up, and then spin the fabric so we're aiming at the next line. This? No, the fabric. Aiming. Spin it so we're aiming at the next line. Here. Spin the fabric so we're aiming at the next line. The next line, we're going around in the square. Okay. Now put the presser foot down. In the back. Bam. Okay. Now we're going to get ready to drive this next line. Hands flat. Make sure you can see everything. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Oh. We got us to another corner. So you need to lift up the presser foot, lift the lever, spin the fabric, put the lever down, 
and we're going to drive again. Okay. Ready? Yeah. I've noticed you're pulling the fabric. I'm going to make sure it's, it's allowed to take it. Stop! It was a little off the line, so. Lift the lever. Spin the fabric. Put the lever down. Position. Ready? Yes. Ah. Oh. poof going on. It happens. If you lift the presser foot and smooth underneath it, you'll definitely want to have your foot off of the go pedal that way. And then we can just keep going. Keep going. Let me get it in position first. Get ready to tell me when to stop. Stop. Did you slow down when I said stop? Yes. So that little pucker turned into an itty bitty fold. I'm okay with that. What pucker? The little bump turned into an itty bitty fold. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, put your lever down. I'm going to take these threads that where we started and give them a trim. You kind of put it on me, you know. Yep. Can I try? Oh, nope, I'll let you get the other side. There's always a thread on the front and the back. Remember we have, we put that thread underneath our sewing machine too? Okay, where is the head on? Here's our last little bit. Hey mom, this is a new one. That I have lots of them. Okay, that's cool. Okay, last part. Let me get the... Tell me when to go. Okay. Well, we've reached our second pin, which is where we're stopping. So before we do that, we need to stop, stop. Before we do that, we need to do our tie off, but I'm worried it's going to hit the pin. So can you pull out my pins? Pull. Pull. Excellent. I'm going to put them over here. I normally have a pin cushion, but it's over at the other table. I can go over there. I need you to press my tie off button. Are, are, am I going to turn that off? You're going to first do that one. I'm going to tie off. And now you're going to press the other button. So now we're needles out. Now lift up the presser foot in the back. Lever. And now we're going to pull our, pull our fabric out. And you can... Now it's time for us to head back to the cutting board. Yay! Yeah, take it back to the cutting board. Can we have a happy dance home? Happy dance. Okay, back to the cutting board. Kiss. <laughs> this is a great spot in the project to take a break. If your child is losing patience, losing focus, now is the time to take the break. Go get a snack, come back in a couple hours, decide when it's right to continue the project. We didn't actually take a break here. So you would notice in the second half of the video, Jasper is losing a little bit of focus, but he still does a great job. Okay. Tell me what we've already done. We already got the two sides. Mm -hmm. And why this one is the wrong side. Side side down so, side down and um this is the wrong way because we're gonna flip it and boom yeah so to make it easier to flip we need to cut the extra fabric off of the corners um, i'm going to show you the first one i want you all to do it why not i don't know how to do it that good can you give this one a try? Uh, All you have to do is not cut the stitching line. Uh, That's great. Uh, 
I'll get off this little extra bit. And I'll cut a little bit extra from over there. Okay, you do that one again. Oh. Right across the corner. Don't cut the yellow line. Mm -hmm. Yay, Ooh, perfect. That's better. Last one. That one there. Yay. Now what? I'm going to take a little bit extra off there. Can you make that weird noise with me? <coughs> nice. Ugh. <laughs> I knew that uh, you weren't going to fall for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look at this. So this is where our opening is. There's no stitching here, right? No. Whoa, are we going to flip it? Are you? So your hand may not be small enough to fit in there. So I suggest scooching in here and grabbing the farthest corner you can and sticking it through the hole. Grab it. Okay, I'm gonna hold this part, you pull that part. Okay, so. That was funny. Okay, so now, hold on. Okay. Please focus for me. You know those scissors are a lot of fun, aren't they? Yes. Okay, we gotta get this flattened out. Woo. Oh. So, grab all these edges out here. We gotta find all those corners. Can you find that corner in there? Let me. Oh, what corner? Oh, it's right there. Okay, poke it up. I am. So sometimes poking can be more easily done with pencil. Pencil. Take the eraser. Okay. Shove it in the corner. Awesome. Okay. So we have all four corners and you can get them as square as you want. You can... But can we make it so they can't do all those crazy stuff? All those crazy stuff? You want them all smooth? Yeah. So I take a pin. Aren't we going to put fluff in this? Do you want to put fluff in it? I mean, it doesn't really need fluff because it's a blanket, no not fluff. a pillow. No fluff. So at this point... If you put fluff inside of it, and you put fluffy, 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 fluff it, it would turn into that. It would turn into a pillow. Yeah. For tiny little stuffed animals mm -hmm. and friends. Yeah. So at this point, you could turn it into a pillow. Yeah, but we wouldn't do that because we're. But we're making French rice blanket, right? Yeah. So I usually already has a blanket. Remember the couch that I made for him? Mm-hmm. So I have gone around to all these corners. Oh. And now they're all square and pretty. You can leave them rounded. There's nothing wrong with that. And then we're going to use a technique called finger pressing. Ooh, yeah, I like finger pressing. So we're going to push with our fingers along the edges. You could absolutely get on an iron and iron it, but we don't really need to. We just need to kind of smooth it out. So, French fries blanket could totally be done other than it has a hole in the side. Yeah, I want it to make it so there isn't a hole and he might get lost in there. And yeah, like we don't want French fry to get lost in there, do we? Yes, then it would be a do. So, the options here are we can sew this by hand, this hole, or we can sew around it called top stitching on the sewing mm, machine. I don't want it. Can you just sew all the way down? Do you want to sew this by hand, this hole? Yes. Yes? So you don't want to go back to the sewing machine? Yeah. Okay. Actually, I do. You do want to go back to the and sewing machine? Mom, these are so pretty. They are very pretty. So do you want to go back to the sewing machine? Yes. Okay, let's go back to the sewing machine. Can I just put this So well, we are going to add a pin right here. Jasper, I'm going to need some pins. Can you help me? Excellent. So right here where we have the opening, we are going to press this with our fingers so it's nice and smooth. And we're going to put a couple pins in just to make sure that the edges line up so that when we sew along this part, everything matches. So we're going to go back to the sewing machine 
and we're going to do a line of top stitching all along the edge. In this one, we're gonna to have to line the edge of our presser foot up to the edge of the fabric. So this may be a little bit harder for your kid, but remember, they already followed that line, so I bet you they can do it. Remember, you can always draw a line on here too, but we're gonna try and see if we can just use the edge of the presser foot. It'll be a fun game, but it's a beautiful creation. So this time, you're going to line the edge of your fabric up to the edge of your presser foot. Do you think you can do that? But it does not have anything to control it with. What do you mean, does it have anything to control it with? You have to like... Okay. So we have the edge of our fabric pressed up again, lined up with that. Now we're going to put the lever down. Excellent. Now we're going to scooch in a little bit closer. Ooh, same thing. Same thing. I need you to press my tie off. You can press that too now if you want. Now take your finger down and let me do the tie up. Okay, now I'm going to go slow and your job is to get the edge of the fabric to stay in line with there. What do you think? Can you take out my pin? No, what pin? Oh, no, that oh. Well, it's fine. We'll just leave that one up. Can you take the other one out too? It's best if we don't sew over pins, but sometimes it's okay. Ready for me to start again? Yeah. Well, no, we don't need to press that again. Why? because we already did one tie off. Okay. okay, our job is to keep the edge of the fabric along the edge of the presser foot. Flat hands. How many tie offs can you do? Um, we just need one at the beginning and one at the end. Okay, edge of the presser foot, edge of the fabric, like that. Now we're gonna get to the corner and we're gonna stop before we get there, right there. Now, lever up. Which direction are we going to head next? Uh, oh, that way. Okay, lever down. Okay, hands flat. Jasper's having a really hard time getting the edge of the presser foot to go along the edge of the fabric. You can see that he's bending sideways and I'm needing to chase his head so I can still see. If your child is doing this, I suggest you mark a line on your fabric for them to follow or use a much stronger mark along the edge of the presser foot, like a piece of tape or even one of those magnetic seam gauges. Press your foot down. Let's drive. If you can now go. Let's drive. Bam. Hands flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, go. Three, three, four, five, and then it goes home. I can't drive unless you're looking okay. where we're going. Because Jasper's having such difficulty, and the fact that he's only six, you can see that I'm helping direct the fabric with my hands. Lever up, spin it round. Now we're going to take care of these starter threads. I'll get the top one, you get the bottom one. That's good, you can leave it. I'll get it. Wow, that was a nice one. Lever down. Drive. Now our goal is to aim right at that spot we started. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Yep. Awesome. Tie off button. Tie off. Needle up. Lever up. Pull it out. Cut it off. Oh, that was a good one. So he just managed to cut both of them at the same 
same time. And that's because he pulled the top one up, and so the bottom one got cut at the same time. Your kid might get confused if both of them get cut, and they're like, but I didn't cut that one yet. So we are going to go back to the cutting board so you can see how the final project looks. Let's do the test. Pretend to fall asleep on you. Oh, French fry is uh, missing in action right now, so Oreo has decided to be our stand-in so we can try out how the blanket works. Oreo, what do you think of the blanket? Whoa. Whoa. High five? Awesome. Jasper did an amazing job on this. We started out with this pattern. He traced, he cut. And then together we sewed it together. Oh, hello, Oreo. Oh, goodness. You are very excited. He just really wanted to be on TV. <laughs> Jasper, what do you think about your projects? It turned out good. Are you happy? The with one it? thing that I was weird to, weird to fight about is um, I thought this winter it would, by the process, it would get a little darker. It would get a little yellow by the thing, and it didn't do it much. Hmm. Okay. That's the part. Are you happy with the results? Yes. Excellent. The one thing that Oreo wants to do tomorrow is be on TV. Yay. Well, thank you, Oreo, for helping us out and being French fry. So, um, remember to subscribe and ring the bell and um, put the like button. Jasper, can you say bye? Bye. We found French fry, yay! Don't forget to head over to FabricNinja.com 